Okay, so hello and welcome back to another episode of Loose Makes. It has been quite a while since I filmed last and um, yeah, I feel kind of weird talking to my camera again, <laughs> but I'm excited to be back. The last episode I filmed in March, I believe it's now September, so yeah, welcome back. I've been kind of busy in between, so we do have a lot to talk about. I also did want to mention um, why I didn't film for the past months and that's because I've been through some major life changes. <laughs> I think that's what I would call that. I don't want to go too much into detail since it's just, yeah, private stuff. I think everybody will go through some changes in their lives at some point and that's totally okay. I just want to let you know that I'm in a very good place right now. I am mentally healthy, stable, very, very happy. And I hope you're doing good as well. And if you're not currently, just know that you will. So that's that. If I do look down, this is where I have my laptop with all of my notes. I do have four pages of notes and like 12 finished objects. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have been busy. We do have a lot to get through, so please grab your favorite project, grab a snack, grab a drink, and then you can just listen to me talking about all of my different projects that I have displayed in the back on my sofa <laughs> and um, spend some time with me. I feel like I'm a little bit awkward on camera right now. Um, yeah. Rest in peace to the Lou that has to cut this video. <laughs> it's gonna be very all over the place, but that's okay too. So, the first finished object that I want to talk about is my Cardi jumper, which I have worked on like for a few months. I started this project in the spring months just as a little spring cardigan and I think I really succeeded with this knit. The Cardi Jumper is a design by Vert Knit and it's a cute, dainty cardigan. I've knit this in um, Wool Dreamer's Saona in the color Ozera. I do know this on the top of my head. This cardigan is very, very lightweight. If you're curious about anything in detail, like the amount of yarn that I've used, my needles, my gauge and stuff, you can go to my Ravelry. I have like documented everything on there. I'm not going to talk about everything in detail just because I have so many projects that I want to talk about in this episode. I do want to talk about um, what I have changed with this cardigan. So I made it quite a bit more cropped um, in the bottom and I have uh, skipped putting buttons in and uh, altered it in a way where I have a little tie in front of it. So I have a little bow in the front of the cardigan, so it's a little bit more like feminine looking. I think it's pretty cute. And I have worn this finished object quite a bit, so it's very successful for me. I do like pairing this with dresses and like tops like this. I would recommend this pattern. It's really detailed, it's very well written and it's originally designed to be worked with one strand of knitting for olive mohair as well as a merino. I wanted to say that the other way around but you know what I mean. And I am considering making another one of these, maybe in a red or in a blue for the winter months. I don't, I don't really know yet but I really like this pattern. I would recommend this and I like this finished object a lot. I'm gonna put the projects that I've talked about somewhere else so you can see the sofa getting like more empty <laughs> throughout the podcast. I don't know, I just thought of that. The next thing I have finished is my square neck camisole which is this one. It could be a little bit wrinkled because I've like 
folded it up and put it in my wardrobe for quite a while. So this is a pattern by Garen Oxlicht or Helene Bieber and it's a 3 by 3 ribbed camisole with uh, quite thick double knitted um, details like around the neck and around the arms. I used the Schachmeyer Regia cashmere yarn which is a wool and cashmere blend and uh, I think for working with it it's very nice. I think the stitch definition is quite nice as well but I have not worn this finished object yet and I finished it like in spring so well yeah I think I have not worn this because of the yarn content I think it's quite warm and this also being like a camisole I don't know I might wear this in the winter months with a cardigan on top we'll see but uh yeah, I would recommend this pattern. Maybe don't make it in a wool yarn, but thinking about it, because it's like ripped and fitted, you would want to use a material that's more stretchy than a plant fiber. So just think about the yarn you want to use and if you're fine with wearing a woolly camisole. I don't know. I'm undecided if this is a successful knit for me personally, just because I haven't worn this yet, but I might in the winter. So yeah, I'm just going to put this in my wardrobe and hope I will find a way to style this. But other than that, I really like the fit. I have worked this with the recommended needles and a fingering yarn, so it came out quite nice. And I wanted to talk about that it covers your bra really well. This is something that I look out for with like the camisoles and tanks that I make. Next up I did a little scrappy project and I made a crochet book tote bag. I didn't sew in the ends yet, you can see. I was a little bit lazy about that but it's quite cute. It's a little tote bag that just fits like one book and a drink maybe. <laughs> I just wanted to use up my leftover yarn that I had from my yoga sweater winter. I'm not really happy with how I made the straps, so I might redo them at some point. But it was a fun little project. I just did a bunch of little granny squares and sewed them together. I like the color. I like the project. I haven't used it as much. I might if I redo the straps and sew in the ends. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's my little book tote. Next up we do have another little crochet project and uh, since I have been into bouldering quite a lot I wanted to make a chalk bag cover, you know, for the chalk that you use on your fingers to grab the boulders. I explained that kind of weird but I hope you know what I mean. Yeah, I didn't want to get like a chalk bag so I thought about just getting a plastic zipper bag and crocheting around it, kind of. And that's what I did with this project. So I used a bunch of scrappy yarns. And I think this looks so cute, but it's so super unpractical. I haven't really used it. I did get a proper chalk bag because a Ziploc bag is just not working very well. I still wanted to show you what I made because I think this is so cute. I really like the colors. It was great fun working this up. Maybe I can use this as a book cover or something like that. I'm not gonna throw this away. I think it's very cute. It's also very wonky. <laughs> I think I cannot count. So yeah, this is a little bit wacky looking, but it's fine. It was fun. Not everything you do has to make sense. Like knitting, crocheting and creating is just meant to be fun. Oh, next up is a fun project because I spontaneously got inspired by, um, I think, a woman in like public transportation wearing a crochet top. And then I went to a like big commercial store and um, got this yarn, this beautiful cobalt blue yarn. I really love this color. I think this looks so nice. And uh, I crocheted a little shrug. I did freehand the shrug. I didn't use any pattern in particular and it was so much fun working this up. I used a cotton yarn 
I don't really remember which brand and it doesn't really matter. It was like a big commercial brand and um, a, I think three and a half millimeter crochet hook. And I whipped up this fun little texture. I do think this is such a creative, fun piece to style with some like more special outfits. And you'll see with like my next projects, I have been into like doing more stuff freehand and making more like fun clothing rather than making garments that you can buy in the store. That's just what I've been into recently. The next finished object is not something I have with me right now since it has been a gift for one of my best friends. And I made a tiny scarf. The pattern that I used is called Just Knitted and um, it's by Susan Ashcroft. You can see a theme here. I really like this color blue and she does as well. And uh, I think when I gifted it to her, it was well received. I originally wanted to make a Sophie scarf, but I have been changing phones and I kind of lost the pattern and I didn't want to repurchase it. Also, like, obviously the Sophie scarf is not like an intense pattern, you could like whip that up yourself. But I just wanted to do something similar, but also something different. And I just searched for a free pattern on Ravelry. And that's why I ended up with this pattern. An interesting thing is that you knit this scarf horizontally. So it has a tip where you begin and then you just increase on every row at both ends of the row. And that way you can just work your scarf for as big as you want it to be. I was really interested in working with cashmere yarn. One, because I just wanted to buy and use cashmere <laughs> since I have not done that before. I have just used some cashmere yarns that were like mixed with cotton or silk or something like that. So I just wanted to experience working with 100% cashmere, which I did. Also because my friend is quite sensitive in her neck area, like most people I am as well. So I really wanted to make sure that she could wear her scarf with no problems at all. And that's why I got one ball of Cardiff Cashmere Classic, which cost me 16 euros for one little ball. But I think it's fine for a present. It's really fine. This pattern worked out perfectly because I could just use up the whole skein and um, get a perfect tiny scarf out of it. You can just tie the scarf one one time around your neck. You can use it as a bandana. Um, you can wear the tie in front, in the back. I think it looks very, very cute. And now I want one too. Now I want one in red. I, I just want everything in bright red right now. <laughs> so I might do this again and get some more out of cashmere. Maybe even two skeins to make a slightly bigger scarf. Well, I do have another plan for a scarf or rather a shawl, which I am gonna talk about later. So I'm not planning ahead too much here. The next finished object is also something I don't have with me right now, since this has been a gift as well. And I crocheted a little amigurumi, which was the first time that I did that. I just spontaneously got the itch to crochet a little plushie. <laughs> I just used some random scrap yarn to make this little bird. And I had so much fun creating it just because I cannot count. I'm really bad at making amigurumis. I don't know. I like crocheting. I like freehanding, but like following crochet patterns, I don't know what it is, but I just can't get it straight. So I'm going to put in <laughs> two pictures. Like this is the expectation and this is what I made. <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing so much when making this because I just looked at the pattern. I didn't look at the picture that much. And when I was finished, I was like, what, what, what did I just make? <laughs> it looked like a little whale rather than a bird. And then I freehanded all of the little things around the bird, like the beak and its legs 
and the wings and its tail. So yeah, I just used the pattern for the body, but obviously I couldn't really get it right. <laughs> so it's my own interpretation. And the receiver liked his gift, so that's the most important thing. I was having so much fun making this, so yeah. Amigurumis are not for me, but it was a fun little experience, I guess. And after making a little bird for somebody else, I wanted to make a bigger bird for myself. <laughs> and that's why I made the emotional support chicken, which you can see in the back. And I'm gonna show her to you now. <laughs> I really, really, really like my support chicken, emotional support chicken. She is so cute, don't you think? I was too having so much fun making this. I was on a work trip just recently and um, got into my yarn stash, picked up this Drops Nepal, which I used for the body. The um, pattern has you stripe your chicken. I didn't want any stripes, I just wanted a white chicken. Also because I like Zelda, like The Legend of Zelda. And in this game there is some like crazy angry white chickens and I kind of wanted to replicate those. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is my chicken. This pattern was quite trendy, I think, last year. And like lots of people Lots of podcasters have made this before. That's that's why I, that's why I wanted to make myself a little plushy chicken. I would recommend this pattern. Um, you can knit as well as crochet this chicken, and um, it's just a bunch of short rows and some hand sewing. Yeah, she turned out so so cute. I love her. Uh, she lives in my bed right now. I do cuddle with her at night. Yeah, she keeps me company <laughs> and uh, emotionally supports me. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I love this chicken. <laughs> also, it's a really good uh, scrap yarn buster because I just stuffed her with lots of old yarn that I didn't really have a purpose for. So that's amazing as well. I don't want to put her on the ground. She's gonna stay with us on the sofa. Yeah, she can stay there. Next up, we do have another free-handed project and I'm very proud of this one. I haven't weaved in the ends yet, but this is what I wanted to show you. It's a free-handed crochet tank. I just got inspired by the yarn at the store. It's a DK weight. I think viscose and cotton blend and uh, I really like this color, this brown, gray brown color. I think it suits me very well and with like trial and error I got this shape out of it. I crocheted this not horizontally but vertically and um, yeah it's a basic tank top shape I think just like the one I am wearing kind of. And I put in a little slit on the bottom. Uh, the back is a tiny bit longer than the front. I just like this look. I do have to sew in the ends still. And then I do have a perfect little crochet top. I do like this a lot. I was hyper-focusing on this for like three days straight. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I just get inspired and want to make something. Now that the temperature is dropping. I don't think that I can wear this outside. I think it looks very cool. I like it a lot. And because I like freehanding stuff so much, I did make another crochet shrug sweater type of thing. And this is how it's looking. I just finished this like two nights ago um, and I really like it. It's um, triple crochets and I just did some stripes. It's a super oversized boxy fit and very see-through, obviously. I'm not planning on sewing in any of the ends since I do like this unfinished look for this piece. And uh, I am planning on wearing this like on top of a tank top or like a sports bra for like more special kind of outfits, just like I mentioned before. And I like this a lot. 
I'm so excited to wear this. This is just a, I think, DK weight cotton yarn that I got from Sustrene Grena, which is like a Scandinavian decoration store kind of thing. And uh, yeah, they have good cotton yarns, I would say. A very nice selection of colors. Well, I have talked about going bouldering and uh, I have shown you my first chalk bag, which was kind of a fail, but that's okay. So I did decide to buy a proper chalk bag and I of course had to make another sleeve for it. I am gonna unscrunch this bag to show you um, the sleeve a little bit better. So I freehanded this little sleeve as well. I am like really in a creative kind of mood recently, which is so fun. I am going to be very careful to not drop any chalk onto myself here. So I did start at the bottom by making a like circle interchanging black and white. This is just the same yarn that I used for my crochet shrug. And um, then for the top, I did make like four panels, like black and white and black and white. And I did leave out little spaces like for this zipper and for this thing that I don't know what to call this in like English or German. You know, this is like the, the you can you can close the bag like this. You know, it's very important to keep the space open for this bag to work, obviously. And because I thought it was quite cute, I added a little star charm um, to the tassel of the bag. Like one side is like black and white and the other is like white and black. I had fun with this bag. It was, it was so much fun making this. And I even sewed down the edge of my sleeve to the edge of the bag with some sewing thread and I just made sure to use black thread for the black yarn and white thread for the white yarn, obviously. And I think it looks very, very neat for someone who doesn't usually hand sew, especially not with like little sewing thread. Um, I am quite proud of this and it stays up on my back. I really like it. It's so cute. And I won't get confused in the bouldering gym, like, which is my bag. Like, it's very obvious that this is mine. And I hope nobody steals this because it's so cute. I'm so proud of this. Um, I hope my friends ask me to make them some bouldering bag sleeves as well. Otherwise, they're going to get something like this for their birthday or for Christmas or something like that. <laughs> I would love to make more like versions of this. Oof. On to another exciting FO, which is my blouse number one. This is what I just finished last night and I really wanted to wear it like for this podcast and like today um, with my new skirt that I just got. But it's just a little bit too warm for that. So yeah, this is my blouse number one, fresh off the needles and uh, also freshly blocked. She's just the tiniest bit damp at the sleeves, I think. I don't know. I'm so excited about this make. I really like the shape, the construction. It looks so nice. It feels so nice. I've used the Summer Silk in the color Schwiti. And this is a yarn hand dyed by a Berlin dyer, Nora. Um, this yarn is just so nice and luxurious. It's a Bourette yarn, which is a recycled silk yarn. So it's using like the scraps of silk yarn production and making it into yeah, this more rustic looking yarn. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see. It's a little bit thick and thin. There are like some fluffy bits and because it is hand dyed, you can see like a little bit of marling because I'm not great at handling hand dyed yarn or rather because I don't really care. You can see where I have changed skeins just at the bottom of the body, but I don't really mind. It's okay. It's handmade. I really like this. 
it feels so luxurious and nice and I'm so excited to wear this piece. I really like this color. I think it suits my skin and um, my wardrobe. This is going to be a great piece for the transitional months, just like fall and spring, maybe for like a colder summer evening. I do love this a lot. Oh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what I have modified with this pattern because you are, I think, originally using a 5mm needle, but because I had my summer silk and I really wanted to make this blouse with it, I have sized down my needle to a 3.5mm just because I like this gauge the best and therefore I had to size up for this pattern to fit me and I sized up two sizes but now in retrospect I would say you should size up three sizes three three <laughs> yeah because this came out a little bit snug well yeah also I think I have worked the uh, sleeves a little bit too long like with sleeve length and body length I don't usually follow the pattern but I will like try it on and block it and see if I like the fit on myself. So um, yeah, the body is a little bit cropped and the sleeves are a little bit long, but I don't think I will redo them anytime soon. I will just try to wear it how it is and see if I like it in the long run. I also have a little bit left of the summer silk, so I don't really know what to do with it. Maybe I can make the tiniest little summer top. <laughs> next year yeah or use it for a scrappy project i don't know yet but i really like this yarn i really like this pattern i really like this make i think this is my favorite thing out of everything that i'm showing you in this video so now we went through all of my finished objects and i am going to talk about my current whips now first thing that I want to show you is my lemon spring. My spring lemon top? Lemon spring top? How is it called actually? One moment. Spring lemon top. Okay. Yeah, it's actually called spring lemon top. <laughs> and this is a pattern by Wei Pan or by Wei on Instagram. This is a crocheted top and I just got through half of it. <laughs> I think this is going to go into hibernation for the colder months and I'm going to pick this up next spring. Um, I really like this pattern. I think it's super cute. I am using the Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Red Current and this is also the color that the designer used for her sample. You are using a three millimeter crochet hook and um, it's mostly worked with like slipped stitches. So every row takes a long time. Let me tell you, <laughs> this is a very like time intense make. Yeah, I am going to finish this at some point. I do love this color. I'm thinking of getting more of this yarn and making a cardigan holding mohair with it. Like maybe making a cardi jumper with this combination. Um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, I'm going to put this into hibernation and pick this up when it's getting warmer again because I am not that motivated to work on something that I cannot wear right away, you know what I mean? And uh, oh yeah, also what I want to talk about is that I used some um, frog yarn because last time you saw me talking about this Knitting for Olive red kind of yarn, I did make the Poppy Tea by Petite Knit and um, it just came out too small because I didn't want to use the recommended cashmere yarn, opted for some fingering weight merino yarn, used a different needle size and um, despite doing lots of math, my project came out too small and I wasn't really motivated on working on this anymore. So I frogged it and started my lemon spring top. Spring lemon top. Yeah. Okay, but enough of this, moving on. 
So now I am going to talk about another free-handed project and it's my first free-handed knit, which is kind of challenging, kind of scary, but lots of fun <laughs> so far. And uh, I wanted to make a fall sweater with some fun yarn. This is how far I've gotten so far. And I am working a dropped shoulder construction, just like making up the stitch counts, the numbers on the top of my head and knitting and frogging and figuring out how I want this to fit. So I just cast on an amount of stitches for the back of the neck and then increased for the shoulders to have this kind of trapezoid shape. Then knit down for a little while, um, picked up the shoulders in front, increased for the neck area, knit down and then just connected under the arms. And I did have to frog this a few times just to get the fit right, but like this is part of the fun. I am also using a bulky yarn. Is it bulky? No, it's chunky. Um, I'm using this Rico Design Creative Melange chunky yarn, which has this fun colorway and uh, some nine millimeter needles. So this goes by quite fast. Um, it's really lightweight. I think it's a wool acrylic blend and uh, I'm having lots of fun with this. It's going to be a super cozy oversized pullover for the fall months. I want to wear this with a short little skirt or some leggings or some jeans, whatever. It's gonna be amazing. I have to say I don't love working with big needles. They just hurt my hands a little bit, but um, yeah, the colorway makes it fun to work on this. And uh, I think this is like my current, like my most active whip at this point in time. So I'm hoping to get this done very soon to wear this um, as soon as it gets cold enough. I also got this yarn just like spontaneously and I just bought the last few skeins that the store had. So I'm not really sure if this yarn is going to be enough, but I've been thinking about using a different yarn for the ribbing. That's why I haven't done the neck yet. Um, like the ribbing of the neck, the arms and the body. Maybe I can use a plain yarn and make this sweater even more like custom and fun. So yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, how this is going to look at the end, but this is what makes this project so much fun. Oh, and I have my Marseille sweater here because yeah, I just am using this fit as a kind of guideline for this free-handed pullover. This is also a drop shoulder design, but um, with some like invisible short rows in the back it's quite cropped. It has a chunky collar, which is my modification though. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I just wanted to show you this. So from time to time, I will just put this on the ground and put my free-handed project on top and see if like the sizing, the proportions make sense. And then I have another crochet shrug because I just like free-handing stuff, crocheting things making things very creative and fun and colorful. This looks so messy. Oh no. So after making my first blue cotton shrug, I got into my yarn stash and I just got inspired. Oh, is this attached? I don't know. Why is this so messy? Okay, 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 okay. There are so many loose ends to this. I have not decided yet if I want to sew them in or just leave it like this. So yeah, just like I said, after doing my cotton shrug, I wanted to make something kind of similar. And I was inspired by the amazing-ish Grace. She has made this bolero and skirt combo, which I think looks so nice. And I wanted to do something similar with a mohair and merino combination of yarns. So I went through my stash and I got out this Urban Pearl sock yarn. This is a merino and silk sock yarn, hand dyed, very, very cute in this 
lilac -y shade. I do love this color a lot. I had one skein of this still left in stash, which I used for this crochet shrug. And I also had like two skeins of Knitting for Olive mohair, soft silk mohair, I believe it is called, in the color Dusty Rose, which I do think is one of the most popular shades. Understandably, it's very, very pretty. So I started with the neckline and worked my way down. And this is how far I've gotten so far. I do plan on making the body a little bit longer, maybe like covering the chest area, if I still have enough yarn left. But I am going to go to the yarn store quite soon. So I might pick up some more skeins of the knitting for all of there. I really like the combination of yarns. I do think the colors look very pretty together. It's more out there. It's going to look very, very cute with like a dress or something like that for special events. And I am having so much fun working on this. I am working this up with a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. So this takes quite a lot of time, but I think it's worth it. I'm excited for this to be a finished object soon. Then, hey, then I do have something else to talk about. And this is my Bettenberg blanket. I want to make a big crochet square blanket um, with all of my scrappy yarns. And that's why I am um, like crocheting little squares and putting them in this bag. And um, I will just count through the new squares because I always mark them with little stitch markers so I can show them in these podcast episodes. I just pulled out all of my squares. It has been a while since I have done any of them. Um, so this will be a surprise for me as well. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six new ones which brings our total to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27. So 27. I'm not sure on how many squares I'll do before sewing them together. I'm just going to proceed <laughs> with making more scrappy squares and at some point, I'm gonna lay them on the ground and see if the blanket is big enough for my liking. I think 27 squares are not a lot though, so I will have to make quite a bit more, but that's fine. This blanket uh, can take me a few months, a few years. I just want a project where I can use up all of my scraps in. So that's just what I'm doing here. The last thing that I do want to talk about is my plans. And I only have one plan in particular, and that's the Stephen West MCAL, so the mystery knit along. I think most of you will be familiar with this knit along, so Stephen West has you make this mystery shawl. It's a very creative, big, fun shawl pattern where you get like one piece of the instructions for every week of October. So right now it's almost the end of September. So I will be going to the yarn store and picking out my yarns for this mystery knit along. This time around it's just two colors. And I am thinking of going black and white possibly. I do want to have a big contrast between my colors. I'm so excited for it just being two colors. I think it's going to look incredible. And I have given myself a little challenge <laughs> to like finish all of my current whips before October. I don't really know how possible that would be. Well, looking at my notes, I am putting my spring lemon top in hibernation, but I would have to finish my fall sweater, like my free-handed knit sweater and my crochet shrug um, before the start of October, which is just one week. Well, 
this is quite unrealistic. <laughs> I will just work away on these whips and then start my mystery knit along for October. I will be listening to an audiobook. I'm also in a um, book club now, which is so fun. I would highly recommend <laughs> Um, joining a book club and like listening to audiobooks while working on your projects and then you have friends to talk about the stories that you're listening to it's amazing actually a fun little side story i was like crocheting in public like in the park and uh, an older lady came up to me and she kind of invited me to join the knit club of her and her friends and she was like yeah you'll definitely be the youngest member, but like, think about it. <laughs> I didn't join them. I don't know, I felt weird about it, but like, nevertheless, it was really nice of her to like, go up to me and ask me if I would like to join them. I think like older people in general, like older women are always so amazed seeing younger people in public crocheting and knitting. And I love this community of like, going up to another creative person and just like complimenting their work, talking about it. It's so fun. Um, where was I going with this? I think I just wanted to say how wholesome it is to be part of a group where you can share your special interests, your passion, and talk about the things that you love to do. So um, yeah, maybe join a book club, maybe join a knit club. Now I'm just rambling on. <laughs> I have filmed for over an hour by now. I have to cut all of this down to a reasonable length. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching, for listening and spending time with me. I do hope that you have made some progress on your current project. Um, if you want to, you can follow this channel. I am gonna upload a podcast episode Honestly, whenever I feel like it, let's see. I am doing these videos just for fun because I like to share my hobby with you. You can also follow my Instagram. I do post some updates more frequently. I do like to make some stories here and there and make some posts about my makes. I think this is everything for now. Um, thanks for watching and I do hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.